knowing that Jesus saves. Yeah. It's a great way to start focusing on a word. When a word is sent, it's not just sent for no reason. It has a purpose in mind. And this one is no different. There is a word from the prophet Amos, the ninth chapter of Amos's prophecy, verses 11 through 12. These words are found in that day, I will restore. David's fallen tent. I will repair its broken pieces, restore its ruins, and build it as it used to be, so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name, declares the Lord, who will do these things. I had a hard time deciding what to call this. <clears throat> Maybe I'll name it after I preach it. <laughs> Matter of fact, you might be able to name it something while you're hearing it. <clears throat> but what I'm driving at is this a spiritual makeover Amen. Amen. a spiritual make over in downtown Charleston there is a well-established residential area referred to as the Battery. This area is nestled near the Ashley and Cooper Rivers, and together they form Charleston Harbor. It has a large park by a long sidewalk that stretches itself close to the water's edge. Tourists and people who live in the city, no doubt, come to relax in the park. They come to walk near the river's edge and be mesmerized by the sights and sounds of the waves crashing into the concrete barrier. The sight of dolphins swimming near boats and swimming near yachts as they sail along can be seen as well. Then there are the multi-level houses that have impressive architectural designs built into each and every one. This was done with old money, no doubt. <clears throat> Being there a few weeks ago, I notice a place in particular. It caught my eye and piqued my curiosity. Positioned in a prominent place next to other standout houses, there is one in particular on the corner of Atlantic and East Battery Streets. It piqued my curiosity for preaching reasons. Because it was 
a three-story structure that was totally covered by a gigantic tarp, a gigantic drop cloth. And as I looked up at it, I took a picture of it. Had to hold my camera way up like this. And when I saw it, I couldn't imagine how anybody could get a tarp, a drop cloth to come from way up there to cover the entire building. And all that could be seen underneath the tarp was some scaffolding on each side that reached all the way from top to bottom. And for those of you who are familiar with, you know, building and working on things, and maybe not, scaffolding is a temporary structure that's, that goes all the way up and all the way around for people to be able to climb up and work on things, to climb up and clean things, to climb up and do repair on whatever it is they are working on. And this house could not be seen at all because it was totally covered up. But the one thing about it, I knew for sure. There was something going on underneath the tarp. There was something going on underneath the drop cloth. And it was done deliberately because somebody was doing a makeover of some sort. It was a work in progress to restore. It was a work in progress to repair. They were working on something underneath the tarp to redesign certain facets of it. And once completed, the scaffolding would be taken down. And the tarp would be removed. And it would reveal an improved structure made to be at its best during these contemporary times. And I mentioned this structure, and I hope you got the picture of what I'm talking about, because what was going on sort of links up with what Amos talked about. What was going on under wraps? takes me to Amos and it links up with what Amos said. In that day, I will restore David's fallen tent. I will repair its broken pieces, restore its ruins, and build it as it used to be. And who is it that will do these things? Nobody but the Lord. And that leads me to say, you know, even though I was talking about a specific building, though I'm talking about that building, I shift over and I talk about another building. I'm talking about the temple that we all live in. And every now and then we have to have some things restored. We have to have some things rebuilt. And when the Lord starts doing it, he does it under a drop cloth. He does it under a spiritual wall uh, drop cloth so that nobody else will know what it is that he's doing. I am so glad uh, that I can see a tarp uh, being dropped over your life. And I say a tarp because many times you got things going on and you don't tell nobody. You got it covered up. But the thing about it is uh, nobody else can do you any good but the Lord can. If anybody can do anything about what's going on with you, it is the Lord. That's the reason why we can call upon him uh, while he is near. And we can seek him while he is still around. He's only a prayer away. You know, every now and then, some things started happening on the inside. 
I know it uh, because I can see it in everybody. Some things happen inside of your spirit. Some things happen inside of your disposition. And you can't necessarily be like you used to be. But that's the time when you can call on the Lord to send in uh, his own uh, redesigning crew. That's the time when the Lord can send his angels all around and they can put scaffolding up all around your life and they can be working on you on the inside while you are smiling on the outside. They can be working on your disposition while you are down low. They can be building you up to make sure you're able to come back around once again. I heard somebody say by report uh, that there's nothing too hard for him to do. So at each end of the trail moment, you know, when the moment looks like it's the end of the trail, when your health situation looks like it's the end of the trail, when your disposition looks like it's the end of the trail, I ought to go, I feel like going, but you know what? I know I got to go, but I don't feel it. When you get to the end of the trail, it becomes God's uh, opportunity to intervene and make his realistic presence known during these days and time. So much is said about him till it behooves all of us to become what I call a quick study and learn what has been said by him that pertains to where you are on any given day. You know, that's the reason why I like we have uh, the fact smartphones, we got Google. <laughs> if there's something I need to know real quick, uh, I can Google it. Yeah. Type in the word and I can get a definition about what's going on. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's how I learned about what scaffolding was. Scaffolding? What? Let me Google that. I got a feeling I, I learned about what it was and I can use it for preaching purposes. So when you are feeling a Low. Who in the world are you going to call? When life situation starts to get out of control and it starts to tear up your battle weary beliefs, who you gonna call to undergird you? Who you gonna call to make you know that you can still get through this added pressure? Who is it that you're going to call? When you get to the point of broken pieces inside your mind. Broken pieces inside of your outlook on life. When your worn places of your tent existence start to give way. I believe it's time to make a request. It's time to turn your eyes toward the hill. And request that a spiritual tar. Request that a spiritual drop cloth be let down to cover over your life during this particular season. A while back you were doing all right. But now that some things have happened, you got to ask for the Lord to send in a, a spiritual drop cloth. Maybe last year you were all right, uh, but some things have happened since then, uh, and it has affected your spirit, uh, and you got to have yourself rebuilt from the inside. And nobody else can do you any good uh, but the Lord. I'm so glad uh, that the Lord is the one uh, who knows how to come in. When you start having some sensitive uh, malfunctions on the inside, I'm so glad that the Lord is the one who can be called to come in when you are decimated by circumstances and events that overwhelm and cause everything uh, to be uh, in disarray. I'm so glad that the Lord says, uh, just check what I wrote uh, in my book. Uh, Check out Psalm 34. 418, I read it for you. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Yes, uh, Jesus saved. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, he saves those uh, who are crushed uh, in spirit.
spirit. I'm so glad that that's the way it is. And so when the storm of life is in progress, worse than it is, when the storm of life is still in progress, and maybe that storm has come and gone, and you still have some stuff that's been thrown around. I'm glad to know that Amos already spoke a word, and he told me, in that day, what is your day? Nobody knows it but you. In that day, when I got some things that's broken down and I'm trying to keep on going, in that day, the Lord says, I will restore David's fallen tent. And you can take David's name out of, and put your name in. Because if you are still uh, a believer in the Lord, uh, you still have the promise of Abraham uh, over your life, uh, then this thing pertains uh, to you. The Lord says, I will uh, repair its broken places, restore its ruins, uh, and build it up like it used to be. And you might ask as I go to my seat, uh, who can do these incredible things? Uh, who can uh, call in a, a, a construction crew of, of a spiritual nature and drop a drop off uh, all around uh, your life? Uh, who is it uh, that can come in uh, and put a top around you in a spiritual sense uh, and work on things that nobody else can see? Nobody can do it but the Lord. He's the one who has proven himself over time and eternity. He's the one who is uh, more than a jack of all trades. He's a jack of all trades and a master of them all. In that day, the restoration process started. In this day, for you, for you and for me, God is doing a spiritual makeover. Doesn't say anything wrong with you, but some things have taken place. And he's got to go in and fix some things and pick you up when you have been destroyed almost by circumstances and events and things that happen in this world. The Lord is the one. I'm glad to know he's still working on us. In a spiritual sense, to give us confidence that we can get over this, that we can get through this. I know the Spirit speaking to somebody. You know who you are. Take it inside. Let this word marinate in you. And when you go out of here, have some renewed hope that in this day, whatever has been chipped away, whatever has been crumbled, the Lord sends in the crew and you under the tarp and then when he lifts the tarp up off of you you come out bright and shining just like pure gold the invitation is extended the door of the church is open for anyone who would like to unite with this church by the ways in which we Except members in this Baptist church, we extend that to you. At the same time, you may want to rededicate yourself. Do so while the choir is singing. And by the time we come up with a prayer. <laughs> yeah. Heavenly Father, we certainly thank you for saving us. And we thank you for continuing to work on us as we deal with different things in life to cause us to be worn to cause us to be broken we thank you Lord for sending in your own spiritual crew to be all around us to build us up from the inside out cause us to be able to continue in your service we ask a blessing upon everyone here. Let it be, O oh Lord, that we realize that you are loving us and working on us all at once.
now, Lord, we ask that you focus on us as we prepare for communion. We have our covenant in front of us, and at another time as we read it, let us, we will familiarize ourselves with the spirit of that covenant that we can continue on in this place. Now, Lord, we ask that you change the elements of communion from its everyday and common usage, enable it to have a spiritual significance for us as it actually represents the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will forever give you the praise. Pray and ask it in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord bless your going out and your coming in. Henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. May the Lord watch between me and thee. While we're absent, absent, one from the other. One from the other. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. See y'all next time. Please congregate here a little bit, go outside. And I'll join you when I go get my mask. Thanks for